So far, we've learned most of the basic features for creating a part in SOLIDWORKS, that is, following part drawings that are fully dimensioned. But what about creating the drawings themselves? What if we created the part, either following dimensions that we found through design calculations, or even just trying to replicate measurements that we obtained from an object in the real world? In these cases, we would want to not only create our part, but also create part drawings, so that our design can be fully communicated to others. Just as an example today, we'll begin by creating this part from an actual existing part drawing, and once it's done, we'll go back to trying to replicate the drawing itself. Since we've created several parts up to this point, and check out the links to the previous lectures if you haven't watched them all already, and since we've covered all of these features and functions in those videos, I'll go pretty fast here. We use the front view to create that front view sketch, and dimension all the information we have using smart dimension. We extrude that sketch to give it a depth of 3.5 inches. We create a reference plane perpendicular to the slanted plane so that we can draw a circle of a half inch radius and extrude it. And just a slower note here, since we haven't covered this specifically. When we're extruding this circle, we want to extrude it in both directions and extrude it only up to a plane. So we select the up to surface option and select the vertical surface for the extrusion going up and select the horizontal surface for the extrusion going down. And finally, we use the vertical plane to create a sketch of two circles, dimensioned and positioned following the drawing's information, and use extruded cut to create the holes. Alright, so now that we have our part, we can save it, and go to File and select the Make Drawing from Part option. This will ask us the template or format that we want to use for our drawings. We'll learn more about creating our own templates and all the info that we can add to our drawings in a later video, link below, but for now, we'll focus on the drawings. So I'll go ahead and select a pretty much empty B-sized paper for this example. Once we're in the drawing window, we can drag the views from our part from the right pane. We can start with the front view, and as soon as we select the location of that view on our drawing, by letting go of the left click, we can move the mouse in different directions and SOLIDWORKS will predict the additional views we want to add there. For example, if we move up, we'll get the top view. We can click to actually add the top view. If we move right, the right side view will show up. We click again. If we go left and down, of course, the other side view and bottom view will show up, but we're not gonna use those. If we move diagonally from our original view, we'll get some isometric views. We'll add two here. When we're done, we click the green check mark, press escape, or even right click. Notice that dragging the views can move them around, and SOLIDWORKS will keep them aligned. The isometric views, on the other hand, can be moved wherever you want. If we click on our parent view, we get some options on the left pane. For this drawing, we do want the hidden lines to be visible, so we choose that as the display style. Since this is the parent view, all the other views will follow. However, if we want one of those views to have a different display style, we can select that one and change it to, for example, shaded with edges. Within these options, you can also change the scale of the drawings. In this case, with this part and for this size of paper, we have a 1 to 2 ratio and it works well. But if you need to change that, here's where you do it. Now, we can start adding the dimensions by using smart dimensions. We want the width of the part, we click on that, and just like in the part view, the drawing view will create the extension lines from the element that we're measuring to the dimension value. Of course, we would like to save some time and not to have to do this for every dimension that we already spend time with while creating the part. To kind of import the values that are already set within the part's information, we go into insert, Click on the first option, called Model Items, and within the options that appear on the left pane, under Source, we select Entire Model. Once we click on OK, we'll have all the dimensions that we use to create the part. Now pay close attention. Never, never ever just do this and be done with a drawing, because like you can see here, it's a mess, and it will never have enough information. What we can do here are two main things. First, rearrange the automatic dimensions so that they are organized and not just anywhere SOLIDWORKS decided them to be, which to be fair, it'll try to keep whatever you used while creating the sketches of your part. And second, add or remove whatever dimensions are either missing to fully describe your part or redundant, respectively. Dragging a dimension can sometimes mess up the extension lines, 
If, for example, here we are moving all the vertical dimensions to the left side, we'll have to tweak the ones that were initially on the right. We want there to be a gap between the element we're measuring, in this case this vertical segment, and the extension lines from the dimension itself. To do this, we click on the dimension that was originally on the right, and we can drag the origin to those extension lines to be just outside the sketch, and this way we have the gap that we wanted. We can also do this for the dimensions on the bottom. Something worth pointing out at this point is that if you change a dimension in the part, the drawing will update, and if you change a dimension in the drawing, the part will update too. It does it both ways. Let's say we change this thickness to 0.3. If it doesn't update automatically, we click on the rebuild icon. The drawing changed, but also if we go back to our part, we see that our part changed too. For now, let's go back and keep the part as it originally was. If one of the dimensions we got from that import is not necessary, we can hide it. We usually don't want to delete a dimension in the drawings view, cause maybe it'll update the part and delete the smart dimension itself, which can lead into trouble. So what we can do is hide a dimension. We don't want this dimension here, we right click and select hide. Let's say we think we don't want this other dimension and we hide it. But then we realize that we do need it. So how do we bring it back? If we go to view and select hide slash show and then annotations, all of the hidden annotations will show up, grayed out, so that we can click on them and bring them back if needed. Now let's look at the two holes. Notice that we have two diameter dimensions here. Now this is very important. The fewer dimensions we have in a drawing, the better. Just like with regular writing or speaking, if you can convey the same information with fewer words, all the better. If the two holes are identical, we can just edit the dimension itself of one of the holes to read that there are two of them. To do this, we click on the dimension, and within the options that appear on the left, we'll see Dimension Text. There we can edit it to whatever we want. We can add any text and the dimension will reflect our changes. And we can even delete the dimension itself. Of course, all we want to do here is clarify that there are two holes of the same diameter. So we add a 2x before the rest of the text. Or if you want to make it fancier, you can use the actual multiplication symbol with Alt 0215 instead of the letter x. With this, we can hide the diameter on the left. As for the location of the two holes, we can probably just keep one and dimension the distance between the holes. And let's say we want to put that on the top view. We can add center lines of holes by right clicking on an empty space, selecting annotations and center line. After that's selected, we can click on the sides of the circle and the center lines will appear automatically. We do this for the second hole, the diagonal extrusion and hit escape. And now we can dimension the distance between the centers of the holes. Now, let's say that we think the top view still looks kind of barren, and we want the X dimension to be there. And let's say we already had that dimension in another view, for example, the front view. So instead of just deleting it from the front view and adding it on the top view with smart dimension, we can just click and hold on it, hold shift, and drag it to the top view. Notice that in our original drawing, the diameter of the slanted extrusion appears on the top view, not the front view. So we can use what we just learned to move the half inch diameter from the front view to the top view. Let's rearrange some of the dimensions by just dragging them. Now the last thing we'll do here is add a custom annotation, which is basically any notes that you want to add to your drawing. So under annotation, we go into note, and if we want a note to be pointing with an arrow towards the element that we're going to comment on, we can just click on that element. This can be useful, for example, for the diagonal lines that describe the circular extrusion. For these lines, we'll add the text, all diagonal lines are parallel. And we can change the font and the font size if we want. Let's make this note a little smaller with a font size value of 9. Now the default behavior once you're done adding a note is to place the same note somewhere else. But since we don't want that, we hit escape. Now if you think that the text is misleading or that it is not complete as is, for example here if our text read lines are parallel only, we can add branches to the arrows to explicitly say which lines we are referring to. We right click on the exact location where we want our branch to come out from and we select insert new branch. We would do this for all four diagonal lines. 
Of course, we don't need to do this here. With the original text reading all diagonal lines are parallel, it works just fine. And now we're practically done. Notice that the only dimension that we're missing here is the 0.8 inches between the slanted surface and the center line of that extruded circle. Other than maybe a redundant dimension, we can say that these drawings are finished. The links to the other lectures of the SOLIDWORKS course, as well as the playlists of the other engineering courses, are found in the description below, so don't forget to check those out. Thanks for watching.